It's time for CIBL Biz Tips, bringing you actionable strategies to grow and improve your business. Prepare to become civilized. What's up, Central Illinois? Welcome to CIBL Biz Tips, where we bring you concepts and strategies to grow your Central Illinois business. I'm Derek Hayden. I'm here with Garrett Ulmer. We are your co-hosts. And we are joined in the Zoom studio today by Cassie Yoder, the owner of Cass Concepts Marketing and Prairie Commons Business Collective. So Cassie was a guest, um, was it in 2021? Yeah, it was. It okay. Was. Yeah, because we had some conversation. We were kind of getting out of the major yeah. impacts of COVID and whatnot and talking about the impacts on marketing. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. It doesn't feel like that long ago. No, that's what I was going to say. Doesn't. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Awesome. Well, welcome back, Cassie, and thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. Um, So for you listeners, we are actually, this is our first recording being done in 2023. Um, You'll probably hear this in late January, early February. So thanks for joining us. Uh, Obviously, Cassie is here to talk a little bit about marketing, and we're going to plan a three series or three uh, episode series about marketing, and Cassie's going to guide us through. So Cassie, we were talking before we hit the record button about kind of, you know, the process of a business owner uh, stepping into, you know, growing their marketing program and developing their business. So tell us a little bit about, you know, maybe a business owner has started, they've opened their business, they're growing, they want to get bigger. Where can they start expanding their marketing program? And at what point do you think they should maybe look for help? Okay, so great questions. And I think those are definitely ones that we get asked a lot. Um, From the start, sometimes a small business will launch and we will just have some quick conversations or maybe they know somebody that knows somebody, they point us in the right direction or they come and say, you know, when I get really big, I want to hire a marketing firm. But we see it at every level. So, you know, from the perspective of a business launch, there is a lot of businesses and organizations and nonprofits that start with a firm out the gate. And in doing so, I always say it's kind of like you're laying that groundwork and that really, really strong foundation that it allows you to forecast so much better. Um, There's not to say that you as a business owner, depending on what you're doing, don't have great phenomenal business, you know, and marketing ideas. But sometimes implementing those strategies is really where the hiccup lies. And so we see this, especially if it is, um, I'll just give you an example, you know, somebody that is wanting to launch a bakery or a jewelry shop or uh, a mechanic shop or something like that. Okay, so that that's their specialty, you know, they know how to bake like there's no tomorrow. But there's this stigma, I think, for small businesses to think they have to wear all of those hats. You know, they can't outsource things because then they will be deemed as they're not doing it all or they're not doing it right. And it's just such an an old perspective, an old business perspective. And ultimately, if you, I really do believe that if you start that partnership early, those businesses that started early, especially upon launch or within that first year, seem to have better strategies and are able to do what they actually love, which is why they started the business in the first place as opposed to doing all these other things that wear them down and chip away at their passion. And that's what I really think we see day in and day out. So. Sure. Yep. That's right. You see, and in Garrett and I's line of work, we see, we work with a lot of business owners and a lot of them are, you know, sole proprietors. It's them, it's them in their business. Maybe they have a part-time employee that comes and helps if, if needed. Um, Mm -hmm. And, They want to grow, but they feel like they're stuck because they can't get their face out there, can't get their brand out there. And it sounds like that might be the case where, you know, they're they're reluctant to do that because they feel they should be doing it or that they feel like they're the only one that can do it. Um, But maybe looking for a firm that is professionally, you know, as a professional marketer um, and is not baking cakes or whatever happens to be to uh, to be the driver behind the marketing. Yeah. yeah, and you know, another piece to this puzzle that we see constantly is the fact that for so many of these businesses, really and truly, money is not, or budget is not really the deciding factor in all of this. Most of the time, it really does stem from an ego perspective. 
And not to say that from a negative standpoint, but it truly is um, maybe something that is ingrained in us, maybe because we saw our parents or our grandparents launch businesses and, you know, doing it all and the grind and the hustle and, and really you're making yourself miserable. And so we see so many partnerships with clients that we have and other businesses that, you know, you may have a marketing director, you may have a marketing manager in-house, but they're still using a marketing firm to expand their ideas. And I mean, I know this firsthand from starting my business and, you know, originally it was on the event side and PR, and then it just continued to grow and to flourish. So I know what that feels like from being that startup. You know, you don't just walk into this massive uh, entity. Nobody does. You grow your business. You guys know how that feels like when it comes to meeting and networking and connecting those dots. But what I always say to myself is like, we are only as good as the ideas or the brainstorming that are coming through. And, and so idea generation. So if you're a business owner and your creative energy is flowing into your product or your service, you're not really allowing and you don't really have the capacity to have the time to just sit back and have coffee and let me brainstorm some marketing ideas. You may do that like in the shower, you know, you're like, oh, I need to do this and this, I should come up. And then you get out of the shower and you forget those things, you know, or they hit you at bedtime. Like when you're trying to like unwind and then all of the, all the ideas unload. But what we talk about constantly is that there is an energy with creativity. There is an energy with storytelling. So when you're sitting down with other like-minded people that have different expertise, whether it's social media, whether it's website, um, whether it's digital advertising, content creation, all of those things. And all of a sudden, those ideas that maybe you did have in the shower or right before bedtime or as you're driving the kids to the soccer practice, you're like, you know, I've thought about that a little bit, but I, don't, I just didn't have time to expand upon it. Um, so that is another kind of piece of this puzzle that really that's when you know you need to talk to somebody else. That's when you know you need to ask for help. And um, again, there's so many packages and budgets and things like that, that I think that the stigma is that those people that have marketing firms um, on retainer are spending $25,000, $30,000 you know, a month on this project. Maybe some are in New York City, but there is options for central Illinois businesses to be able to get the help that they need and they deserve so that they can continue to do what they love. And for me, it is a passion in small community development. And, you know, we as small towns, we have to have those things, those businesses and those services that are unique to our small town. You know, that's what drives tourism. That is what drives new people moving to those towns. That is what drives the growth of school districts. So all of these pieces play a part in community and economic development. So to know that your business, even if it is a small business, plays an integral part in your community, how can we help to grow? Because what we don't want to have happen is that, like we talked about on our the podcast episode that I did with you guys, we don't want it to get to that point where the only option we have is to buy online. You know, you still want to be able to have to pop into a store and do, you know, grab something and have that at your fingertips if, if you know that it's there. But the only way that happens is that I do believe that you have to help take care of each other. So pricing yourself out of the market or getting to a point that your services no longer can help the smaller businesses I don't know, maybe there's a market for that, for those individuals and for those businesses, but that's not what we strive ourselves on. And I think it's maybe because my parents had a small business. So I know what that was like growing up. So, yeah. yeah. I think a lot of business owners at first are just scared, you know, and, and a lot of them don't want to admit it. You know, they know what they do, but what's their ideal customer look like? You know, yeah. those are things to sit down and try to discover, you know, you might be able to do this one service, but what's your most ideal customer? How can you benefit them the most, it, which benefits your business? You know, so Gary, I sitting think down and having, go ahead. That, uh, that's a good point about the ideal customer too, because sometimes you don't realize that there's customers that would tap into your product or your services. You're, you're so focused on this is what it's always been, that it's like, what happens when you start doing that digital marketing and you expand yourself and your product and your services to these other people, all of a sudden that base broadens. And that is sometimes mind blowing for businesses too, to realize, well, I didn't even know that the 45 plus female would be interested in this. Yep. 
until you kind of start working through it and, and going through that process. So that's a really good point too. Yep. Mm -hmm. So before we sign off of this one, Cassie, you, you talked a little bit about having a brick and mortar location and there's been some developments with Cass Concepts, I believe. And this is a good time to explain to our audience what's going on in Decatur right now. Yeah, so we have our office space that's in downtown Decatur. So anybody who's kind of ventured into the downtown area, Merchant Street is the historical streets, all these shops and businesses. So um, we have our Cast Concepts marketing firm right there in the heart of downtown Decatur. And uh, we opened up our office space here in December. And so part of it is marketing space, but the other part of it is our collective. So Prairie Commons Business Collective taps into businesses and services that maybe don't have brick and mortar themselves, uh, but they want to do pop-ups. So we host then in the space behind me, uh, we can do, you know, one week boutiques where they come in and the storefront is completely transformed into their business. They do a launch, they do their boutique, and then they pack up and then they go back to creating and stuff. Um, we also have it for an event space. So we have a book launch that's happening that's coming up with a client that is going to be in February and a lot of lunch and learns. So those types of things where you're wanting to have a meeting, you want to have a space, but maybe you don't want to do it at a hotel or do it at a really busy, loud restaurant. Um, so we just tried to listen to what our clients are saying. And I sit on several different boards within the communities and in central Illinois, Moultrie, Douglas, and Pyatt, different counties and whatnot. So not just here in Macon County, but kind of just knowing that there is other options beyond just um, knowing that you just have to have a brick and mortar if you're going to have a business. And I, I don't think that's the case. And equally so, not everything has to be sold online. I think people still want that communication. They want to know who the artist is. They want to know who's designing their jewelry or, or whatnot. Um, so we really tried to think about that and wrap our head around what made sense um, and having the two pieces combined of the office space and then the collective, um, it's been really, it's been really exciting just to have like 30 days in the space has been remarkable. So to see how that all unfolds uh, for small businesses or the businesses that are looking to launch, I think that's been a lot of the conversation of, I have a business idea and what better time it's the new year. It's like, Hey, what do I need to do if I want to kind of launch it? It's like they're kind of dipping their toes in the water. And, and, you know, Garrett, you kind of said that early about like, maybe it's a fear thing that sometimes yeah. you don't know what questions to ask. So you kind of pull yourself back and, and we see that, you know, new year's resolutions, people want to go to the gym, but they're so filled with anxiety. They're like, I don't, I'm not going to step foot. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of the same, the health of your business, the growth of your business ideas. Sometimes you just need another person, another organization and it's nice because you have a team of people helping you. So it's like, it's one thing to hire a marketing director and then you're relying on one person's ideas, but to have a firm that can kind of help you and brainstorm, um, it's just been really exciting. And it's, it's fun to see these businesses grow and sh you know change and become beyond what even sometimes I think the business owner thought that it really couldn't become. So that's been incredible. And I don't know, it's just as cool to see from a community and economic development that there is so much going on and, and so many businesses thriving. Um, and that's remarkable to see. So, well, congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. You're a stud, Cassie. Appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate sharing all that. So <laughs> thanks for letting me. <laughs> yeah. So everybody listening, if you stick around for next week, we are going to hit a topic that I'm excited to listen in on. Uh, posting with purpose is what uh, the second session is going to be labeled. So um, until then, make sure you're subscribing to the CIBL podcast and your favorite podcast platform. While you're there, please leave us a review. You can find us on social media, mainly LinkedIn and Facebook. You can connect with Garrett and I personally there as well. Until next time, y'all been civilized. Take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash CIBL podcast. You can also follow us on LinkedIn. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. It's the civilized thing to do.